What is free will? What is free will? Do we all have free will? Is everybody's free will as free as every other body? Is every, does everyone have the same type of free will? What is free will? Do we all have free will? And does free will really, really exist? These three main points of reasoning, points of reasoning right here, right? But the basic question is, do we have, do we really, do we really have free will? And the first thing is to define, well, what is free will? What are, what, what are we speaking about? According to the scriptures, according to the Bible, for example, what is free will? In other words, first of all, what is free will? What, what is free will? Define free will. Does free will even exist? People talk about whether God exists or not. Well, let's just ask this question, right? Do we have will? Right? What is will? You know, they say will, will, like willpower. Do we have will? Do we have willpower? Is that free will? Is it a free will power? What is free will? So just to get to some of the bottom line of it, we hear a lot of very interesting um, conversation, discussion, even some presentations that ones have presented on this subject matter of free will. Free will in the Bible would be a very good um, subject matter to, you know, reason on. If not so much debate, you know, we just have this because we went and collected a couple of um, kind of word pictures, kind of evidence, you know, um, uh, fair use sort of things, you know, evidence for subject matters, you know, what's being discussed and, you know, what others have said. And in some cases, whether we agree, you know, in some cases we agree with what others have said, you know, to a degree. But the three main things here is, do we really have free will, right? What is free will? And does free will exist? But the first question should be a definition of free will. Now, in our investigation and research, and us doing research on, well, what is free will? It gets into a lot of um, philosophy, like a lot of philosophical, latter day, nowadays, kind of philosophical discussions, especially in this time of the Gentiles, the Anglo European, and the Anglo American nations over the past 400 plus years. There's been a lot that has been said on free will. So if we're going to just generally reason on that or generally address it, we should be a little familiar with the the context of the subject matter, free will. So like I said, free will is something that's been discussed and, and reasoned on and different philosophers, you know, Anglo-European, Anglo-American, we say among the Gentiles, the European, the Gentile nations, but this is not to say that at the core of whatever free will really is. It's not to say that it has not been discussed, but just looking through the Bible, if we look through the Bible and we search free will, what will we find, right? Will we find anything in the Bible that says free will? So let's just do this right here, right? First things first, to put into context. Now we already have a particular scripture. Let's just take that off, scroll that down like right there. Right, just so that ones and ones. We're gonna come back, you can come forward to that, but let's just do this first right here. Free, we're using the word, not the word, my sword. We it's, it's the word, but you know, the word is a sword, so we're using right. See, I put free word, free word right there, free will. The word software here, all right now. Here we have 23 verses, all right? There's something known as a free will offering. Are they speaking about a free will offering? There's such a thing called a free will offering. Free will offering is called the nadaba. Nadaba. That's voluntariness, free will offering. Is this what they're speaking about when they're speaking about free will? From the Strong's definition, the idea properly in an abstract sense is spontaneity. Or in an adje a adjective, like an adjective sense, spontaneous. Right or in a concrete sense, spontaneous or by influence and plural, abundant gift, abundant gift, nadaba. Right now, getting to the root right here, we have nadab, 
right, Nadab. Interesting that in HaTorah there is the narrative of the two sons of, of Aharon, of Aaron, the first Moshiach, the first anointed of Israel, according to the text, you know, the first Christ, we can say, you know, Aaron and his sons, a kind of a template in the Brit Kadasha for Moshiach, for Christ, for Yeshua, right, and his disciples. But here we have Nadab. There was Nadab and Abihu, Nadab and Abihu. These two sons that presumptuously went in to offer the incense, the Aishans, the incense offering, and was consumed by the fire of Yahweh of Hashem, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, of the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be your name, because they had presumptuously went in, and according to the text, it says they had they had brought in strange fire, strange fire. But one of the sons, his name was Nadab, Nadab, right? In modern Hebrew, they'll say Nadab, Nadab, but ancient pointing Nadab, right? Nadab. Right is where in the Hebrew sense we have the sense of like to incite, to impel, or to make willing, the sense of volunteering. And then in the Nadaba, the Nadaba is a particular type of offering that in translation is known as a free will offering. So when it said, the question is asked, do we have free will? Are you speaking about free will offering? Yes, we as the B'nai Yisrael, as the sons of Israel, Yes, and the Yehudi, the Yehudim, we do have free will in the sense that we have a free will offering. So free will in that context exists. Now there's the European Gentile philosophical, you know, and sophistical kind of reasoning concerning free will, whether free will exists, so forth and so on. And a lot of very interesting if you're into that. But we're just gonna just just summarize on that, right? But we're focusing here is on like free will. And the Bible. So in free will in the Bible, yes, we do have a free will. It's called the free will offering, right? It's called the Nadaba. And Nadaba comes from the age 50, 68, which is Nadab. And Nadab, as a primitive afro shemitic root, means to impel. To impel, like to kind of, to, to, to prompt, to kind of push, impel in that sense, right? To volunteer, like as a soldier. A soldier volunteers right but nadab 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 voluntarily now there's to present and the, pre the presenting sense of the word nadab is in the sense of the nadaba the nadaba offering to offer freely right to make right to be right to give willingly to 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 be willing right to to make something willing to offer or to offer oneself willingly Right, so there's free will in that sense. So that's the true context of the whole long and short of whatever possible um, imagined arguments could be imagined. Right, and you know, and and talked about. You know, I mean, the true sense from the Bible. So that there is free will. But now I know most folks would say, well, we're not talking about free will in that sense. But isn't it interesting that there is such a thing called the Nadaba, right, in the Hebrew, the Nadaba, right? And the Nadaba is a free willing, like an offering that's, that's offered freely. In other words, it's not an offering like an offering of thanks and praise, a thanksgiving offering. It's not like an offering for one having fallen short or, or sin. You know, it's not like a sin offering, right? It's not like one of the feasts, the festival. You know, those kind of offerings, you know what I mean? Which is almost like how we pay, you know, in a divine Hebraic sense, we pay the bills, you know, by, by our thanks, our praises, our fellowshipping, our offering, our praise and worship. It's not an offering in that sense, but it's a, a voluntary, a free will. So it's, it's not for any of the other stated reasons that an offering can be given. And then the link of that word, nadab, is if one does something willingly willingly so this sense of free will where do we get this idea of free will we get this from the so-called white man the european and the gentiles they're the ones who have reasoned on free will if you go and just pause this and go google free will right you would find no doubt a lot of psychological like it gets a his what's the origin of free will the origin of this whole thing for free will like the origin of free will as a 
topic of discussion as a subject matter of conversation over the past 400 or so years so-called enlightened you know you know men you know enlightened people europeans mainly gentiles you know have been discussing free will you know different philosophers might have discussed free will do we really have free will and some of them have referenced it with their understanding or misunderstandings of the Bible concerning like determine, you know, determinism, right? Determinism, right? In other words, that that's all my or preordinate, you know, predestination. That's the topic right there. Predestination. That some are predestined for this, some are predestined for that. Right? And some say, well, if people are predestined for this or predestined for that, like some of their interpretations of areas of scripture would make them believe then how can they really have free will? That's one of the arguments right there. But here we see free will in its um, Levitical sense, free will. If we go on, we see his vow or free will, free will offering. That's an offering that he's offering freely, right? Because he just wants to do that. So yes, there is a free will in the scriptural, biblical sense of free will. It says, besides all your free will offering right or in a free will offering it's interesting how the whole context of free will which existed longer than the gentile philosophical discussions of free will because when we look at the philo the philosophers they discuss this whole concept of free will whether people really have free will or not and usually they had some wrestlings with not just the Bible, but the ref wrestlings with um, European, uh, we call it counterfeit, right? With counterfeit Christianity or with Romanism or with Protestantism, with, with those isms, many of the Europeans, Anglo-Europeans, and then later on the Anglo-Americans, we get the Protestants and others come to America, you know, in this kind of religious guise. So there's those who had certain beliefs of the Bible and then others amongst them, who were more like free thinkers. You hear about the free thinkers who question certain beliefs of the church, the European Gentile whitewashed church. And they also question certain beliefs of the European, the whitewashed Bible, like, you know, the, the way the church and different denominations use the Bible. And they came to this whole discussion about, you know, free will versus what the Bible says, predetermination. If there's predetermination, how can we have free will, so forth and so on. But now, all of that is a latter day, and we would say a Gentile among the other nations, like the European Gentile nations, Anglo-American nations, especially today, you know, and, and amongst their philosophers and scholars and academics, that's a whole different discussion. And when they talk about, well, what does the Bible say? They go to the New Testament and they get into, like, I think it's Ephesians and where it speaks about what some call predetermination, right? They say, well, if some things were predetermination, predetermined by Hashem, by Yahweh, hey, by Yahweh, Jehovah, and they were predetermined by Jehovah, right? The Elohim Yisrael, the Elohim of Israel, right? then how could people really have a free choice about what they did? All right? So you, I'm just going over that just so that one can understand what the context of this is. So there is the free will discussions over the past 400, 500 or so years coming out of Europe, right? Even coming into the Americas. It's a very like so-called academic thing, you know, in, in the schools and universities and it's also philosophical discussion. Right. And usually they use the Bible or at least a basic their understanding or misunderstanding of the Bible as a kind of a counterbalance in the argument and debate. Now, what I, Ras Iadonis Tafara, Yadin here of the Lion of Judah Society right here of the Brethren Brotherhood, response for that the response to that and for that is that there is free will according to their translation the king james version this 400 year plus translation of the bible there is free will but this free will they never discuss isn't that interesting so in the context of the hebrews and the israelites the free will was the free will offering and here's what's interesting that even the hebrew word for free will offering as we showed you nadaba right it comes from the root word is nadab and nadab means to volunteer to make oneself willing to impel to volunteer basically the idea of nadab 
which is the root is willing. And the offering, the Nadaba, right, is called the free will offering, right? Is a is a voluntary, where one voluntary. And as we go through here, you can see all the quotes, right? There's like 23 verses. Right, just give a little bit of time on the screen for each of the verses. All right, now this is not the same context. Something we can see is not the same context, but we see that the majority of verses we're covering now, we're in Ezra. Right, look what it says right here. It says that were consecrated, and of everyone that willingly offered a free will offering, willingly offered. So we have the word nadab, and then we have the word nadaba. Right, and the word nadab means willingly, like willing. Right, it's a, it's the willing sense, sense of willing. Look what it says right here. Now, here's what's interesting in Ezra, Ezra chapter seven, verse thirteen. Of the twenty-three or so entries for free will in the Bible, in the King James version, right, the four hundred year, you know, core Western translation of the Bible, in Ezra chapter seven, verse thirteen, says, "I will make a decree that all they." of the people of Israel, Amo Yisrael, and of his priests and of the Levites in my realm, which are minded of their own free will. Boom. So here we finally have a verse in the scripture. We can now say that based on the evidence we have, the H5069 Nadab, once again, Nadab to volunteer to offer freely. Right, so what is this discussion about free will? Right, here they have it from the Chalde. It corresponds to the H5068, which we touched on, which is to be liberal or to give liberally, to be minded of, right, of one's like own free will. One's own free will, just like the free will in Daba, where one offers it freely, but they can only offer it freely if they be minded of a free will. They can only offer the Nadaba if they themselves be in the Nadab state of mind, to offer freely, right? So here in Ezra 7.13, it says, who are minded of their own free will to go up to Yerushalayim, go with thee. So here the king and everything was given Ezra during the time of the return from the Babylonian captivity where the 70, like after 70 years, Right after 70 years, the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Yehuda, right, the hood, Yehuda, was in captivity in Babylon, where they returned during the time of Ezra. We have Ezra in the Bible, Ezra chapter 7, verse 13. So the king makes this particular decree, and he says that all who are free-minded of, are minded of their own free will. So that phrase where it says, which are minded of their own free will, all this comes from Nadab. Nadab, Nadab, right? All this comes out of Nadab. Now, Nadab here is used as a verb, right? Nadab here, and it's related to Nadab, right? Another verb, which means like to incite. Somebody's incited, like is willing to do, is moved. We say like moved, right? Is moved, is made willing, right? Is made willing. So the king says that those who can return from captivity are those who have a free will to do so. This is interesting, ain't this? Ain't this getting more interesting? That those who returned, the Yehudi, right? The Yehudi or the Jews, even of we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, the Yehudi, the Jews who returned from the Babylonian captivity after the 70 years in Babylon with Ezra to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, Jerusalem and rebuild the Haikal, the temple, that they were those, not all Israelites, not, not even Israelites, scratch that, Judahites, because the Israelites, the ten tribes already were in captivity from earlier. They never returned. So the Judahites, a remnant of the Yehudi, a remnant of the Yehudim, a remnant of the Jews, even the black Jews, returned out of the Babylonian captivity. Right? They returned out of the Babylonian captivity. But they who returned were those who were minded of their own free will. They had free will, right? Free will. Remember, this is discussed free will. So does free will exist biblically, scripturally? So free will in the Bible, right? I have to call this one free will and the Bible, right? Does everybody have free will, right? Do we really have free will? Now, the we here, we the black Jews, yes, we do. 
But notice there were some Yehudi, there were some black Jews who stayed in Babylon, like right now. Right? We talk about re repatriation, right? We talk about repatriation, the land grant, so forth and so on. There are some who have a willingness to return, right? And others who don't have a willingness. They're not minded of their own free will. So when we, so do, do everyone have free will? So according to this verse in Ezra chapter 7 verse 13, we would have to say that no, not everyone had free will. But there were some of those who did have free will. And those who did have free will were able to return, right, of their own free mind, right, of their own free will. In other words, they had the free will to return, and basically, so they returned. This is what we get in this testimony right here. This is an important verse here. Chabarim, you know, fellow Chabarim, fellows, you know, Talmudim, fellow disciples, take this down, take note of this particular verse right here. Because here we have the word used, because some would say, oh, free will is just the offering. No, here it's using the same root word, the Nadab, here in a verb sense from the Kaldi, the Kasti, right, from like Western Shemitic. It's from the same root body of root languages. So when we say about Amharic and Hebrew Afro-Shemitic language and Gutters, we're speaking about the same root languages, right? This is why we advocate and, and study and also share and utilize this because it's been instrumental in our own growing in grace and the knowledge. So here, those who are mind of their own free will, we have an example of free will right here in the Bible, right? But then in this one example, we have something that is twofold. In this one example, we have some of the Israelites who were who were who were free willed, who were minded, who had free will in the mind, and they decided to return. And there were other Israelites, right, who did not have free will, and so in effect they stayed in Babylon. Does this sound familiar? This sounds very familiar, right? It wasn't speaking about any other condition. You know, we can make other excuses, so forth and so on. But ultimately, right here, this is a powerful verse right here in our discussion of free will. Is there free will? Who really has free will? Do we all have free will? Is everybody's free will as free? Because conversely and vis-a-vis, -vis, we have another verse that we'd like to share. Right? But let's just go through this right here free will offering notice this one right here this is interesting it says with the free will offering of the people and of the priests offering willingly right for the house of their elohim their power which is in jerusalem which is in jerusalem right so even one to give a free will offering it says in the gold are a free will offering there were those who gave gold free will offering here in the Psalms, Dawid says, Psalm 54 and 6, I will freely sacrifice. I will praise. So he, he will freely, freely sacrifice. No compulsion. You see, because there's, there was the sacrifices. Others of the sacrifice had to be given, right? Especially for falling short, for sin, you know, or other sacrifices, you know, had to be given during the high holy days. Like I said, the high holy days was a way that we paid bills. Like to get in discussion on bill. What is bill? Is bill Baal? Is the bills Baal? Like Baal, you got to pay the Baal. You got to pay the bill. Interesting. Um, interesting. That This is interesting. But we share it with those who can build on it. You know, continue to build. Start and continue to build. But right here, we have a couple more verses here. Except I beseech thee the free will offering of my mouth. So here in Psalm 119, verse 108, 108, we have a free will offering, the nadaba, right, of the mouth, the word, sound. So even that free will giving, right, showing even the climbing of Jacob's ladder through the scripture. That growing in the true Hebrew spirituality, crossing over from low degrees to high degrees. Here in Psalm 119, the 108th verse, except I beseech thee, the free will offering, right? The free will offering of my mouth, O Yahweh, and teach me thy judgments, right? Here we have in Hosea 14 and 4, right? It says, I will heal their backsliding, I will love them freely. This is like the Almighty speaking through Hosea, the prophet, 
that Yahweh Hey Hashem would love, you know, the Bnei Yisrael, the Beit of Israel, you know, uh, me and Ruhama, his his sons and daughters, right, the brothers and sisters, freely. So he has free will to love freely. For mine anger is turned away from him, right. And then last, well, almost lastly, here we have Revelation 21 and 6, and he said to me. It is done. I am the Aleph, Ha Aleph, and Ha Tawe. That's the Hebrew. Ha Aleph, Ha Tawe, or in the Koine Greek, the Alpha and Omega, the Kedamawi, the beginning, right? The beginning and the end. I will give to him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. So the giving, right, of Yahweh, of Ha Kadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, is freely. So he has the will to give freely he has free will we're establishing what is free will right from the bible this is why this is called free will and the bible and the question is do we really have free will does maybe it should be does everyone have free will does everybody have free will? does everyone have free will last thing is the last next to last verse 22 and 17 revelation and the spirit how ruach and the bride the kala say come and let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, get that right there, whosoever will. So we get into the same idea of will. That means whosoever has a free will, right? Make him or let him take the water of life freely. So if one has the will, I said, if there's a will, there is Yahweh, truth, and life of the King of Kings Christ. So here, 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 just touching on this right here of what is will, right? What is will? This is the area. Do we have free will or are we predetermined, right? Are we predetermined? Some people believe that we don't have free will, that there is no such thing as free will, that we are predetermined. We're going to take up that, you know, as a, as a pickup. Right, a pickup there, right? You know, so it's, this is th this is a good still right here. This is a good still right here because this here, looking at the time, we're gonna sum up right here. This is just a basic on free will right here. Let us go to um, let, let's go to the sword, my sword again, right? And let's look at the devil and will, right? The devil and will. Now we're looking up devil and will. Because here we're going to, right here. Now this is the interesting verse. The fuller context, we've touched on it before, but suffice it for now. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. Now 2 Timothy, Timothy was a disciple, right, of um, Rav Shaul, right, or the Apostle Paul, the rabbi for the, for the Gentile Christians. It was our brother Paul, right, also known as Shaul in the Hebrew. So he's here writing and instructing his, um, his son, and we say son in the sense of his disciple right here, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26, and it says, And that they may recover themselves out of the sneer of Diablos or Hasatan, out of the sneer of the adversary, the opposer, Diablos, the liar, the slanderer, the devil, who are taken... See, there are people who are taken. There's people who are taken captive by him. People who are taken captive by Hasatan. At his will. Note this verse right here that Paul, my Rabbi Paul of the Gentiles, our brother, my brother Shaul, right? Here, the apostle of the Gentiles, Paul, is writing to his disciple and giving him some basic instruction. Right? Because his mother was a Yehudit. Right, and his father was a Gentile. This is why some of us say, "Well, you are a Yehudi, a Jew, if your mother's a Jew. If your mother is a true believer, right? You know, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world." Right? Second Timothy two verse twenty six, and that they may recover. So there's people that need to recover themselves out of the sneer of Diablos, the liar, slander, Diablos from the Greek, Hasatan in the Hebrew, the Mastema who are taken captive. So some people are taken captive by him at his will. So this clearly states, so here the will, right, is the lema. You remember that Molester Crowley, they call him Alester Crowley, Alester Crowley, Molester Crowley, and with all that kind of um, the OTO 
and a lot of that spiritualism that really gave rise to a lot of what is sometimes referred to as Egyptology, mystical kind of Masonic Egyptology, you know, um, that whole cult there, uh, Lester Crowley. If you don't know about Lester Crowley, look up a Lester Crowley, right? Most of ones will be familiar, but there's something that he brought forward and he was dabbling a lot in Egyptism. Right, and we see a lot of that crept up and has crept up among the Kemetics. A lot of the black Kemetics think that they're going back to ancient Egypt, and all they're doing is regurgitating Molesta Crowley or Al Alistair Crowley. They're just regurgitating a lot of his writings. And he had this thing he called the Law of Thelema. Thelema is a Koine Copto Greek word, Thelema. And you see it right here, Thelema. And this word right here is, is, is will. It comes down, let's get to. This is the real, the second entry right there. Will, choice, inclination, desire, pleasure. One's will, right? The lama, the lama, right? It has a sense of determination or choice, right? Specifically, purpose, decree, volition. The word, the abstract sense of it, volition, like the will. Passively, one's inclination, one's desire, one's pleasure, right? Now, a key word for us um, in the Yehudim is when we look at this idea of inclination, there's what we call the yetzah hara, right? The yetzah, the inclination to hara, 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 to hara, hara, to the evil, to that which is ill and hurtful. And there is the yetzah ha tov, there's an inclination to the good, right? And everyone has both inclinations, but the key is in the situation, what are you inclined to? Right? There's times that you have inclination to good, something comes up, and you'll check yourself because you'll see your yetzahara, you'll see your inclination to evil, right, come about, right, your will, you'll be willing to do something that is hurtful or harmful or, or, or bad, right, for whatever reason, you, you're willing to do that, right, and so we have telo or etelo, etelo, etelo is to will, to have a mind, getting to the root of telema, so Alistair Crowley, when he was in the OTO, some of his, um, it's like spiritualism, right? We call it like emanation philosophy. What is majesty, Gormawi Nagus and the guest, right? The king of kings, Gormawi, how the Salah, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, warned us as Rastafari, right? Saying that man is not emanated from a deity, right? That whole philosophy of emanation philosophy is 180 degrees opposite of creation. Right, that that the creation right is by design, right, and has a creator, right, and the fingerprint of the creator is on his creation. But there's those who don't, who have another inclination, another will. And Molesta Crowley, Alex, Alester Crowley, who, like I said, dabbled in much cometicism before cometicism was picked up by black people, and we. Um, say to you, you know, and, and, and propose to you that a lot of these Molesta Crowley ideas has crept in to a lot of cometicism, right, and the black consciousness community covertly, right, in some cases overtly, but a lot of ones don't even know that when they get into a lot of this Egyptology and this cometicism, at a certain level, some of the beliefs Right and accepted views, even coming out of the Gentile Egyptology, have been have been um, um, molested in that sense. Right, intellectually molested by ones like Alistair Crowley and his OTO, and with their law of Thelema. Right, the law of Thelema says, you know, what did they what say about their will? Right, you know. Um, whatever one's will, you know, do what thou wilt. Yeah, that's it. Go, do what thou wilt shall be all of the law, right? So they write a new law, right? That's why the scripture says they frame mischief by a law, right? They frame mischief by a law. So just getting to the root of this right here and build on this so ones can go over it for their own, right? And get a better understanding, right? You know, see, by Hebraicism, is to delight in. That's what we say, the yetzer, the yetzer, what's your inclination, right? So here, here in the verse, 2 Timothy 2 and 26, 
it says that these and those please check out the fuller chapter here second timothy chapter 2 we're zooming in on verse 26 because it brings out the idea that there's many people that have to recover themselves out of the sneer out of the trap of diablos of the liar of the counterfeit spirit right the counterfeit spirit right thus to say the evil spirit the, the the opposition to good and truth to you know the opposition to hashem to high elohim high lehim and that's speaking of hasatan the opposer we could say the devil is like the prosecutor right like in court you know it's like the prosecutor you know and and the moshiach is like our advocate right so ones have to recover themselves out of the sneer of the diablos of the devil who are taken captive by him so those who have to recover themselves, they've been taken captive by Diablos, it says, at his will. This is the key thing here. This is why we use this, this still right here. Been taken captive. You see that puppet there? Right? Like a puppet on a string. Right? They've been taken captive. Right? They've been taken captive by the will of Hasatan, by the will of the adversary, by the will of the devil. So see, so so therefore. Do they have free will? This is the question. Do these and those, the, the one who, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, verse 26, who have been taken captive, like taken into captivity. Now, this also points to the once lost, now found black and brown sheep, the people of the Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel, here in the Americas and the Caribbean. Haven't we been taken captive by Hasatan? by those in counterfeit Christianity, right, in, in the counterfeit? Haven't we been taken captive by them, the liars, even though our people have created and done things and are witness in ancient archaeology, and even as the Israelites still, they lie against it? So they diablos, they are liars, diablosoch, right? So here, 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 to the one who has been taken captive by diablos, it says, at his will. Did you read that? At his will. Can they have free will? And they might have some willpower, but is it a free will? So is free will, does free will exist? Hebraically, we can say yes in the context of the Hebrew scriptures, especially in Ha Torah, right? In the direction of instruction. We just brought that out, right? But in the world sense so in the kingdom i right, come out of her my people when we come out of babylon we have the true free will but as long as we are still see that's the hebrew effect and if you haven't checked out our video on hebrew right on hebrew right we have a video up there on hebrew We're going to follow up on that and bring forth some more exhibits as well but that is like a pet shot like a plain you know a basic you know a basic um treatment of the subject matter what hebrew truly means hebrew refers to our spirituality right those who are to recover themselves who are able to recover themselves out of the out of that captivity of being captive of diablos of that lying spirit those who can recover themselves they are truly hebrew they have crossed over according to the meaning of the word as testified by the scripture right comparing scripture with scripture Right? So whether one's going to say what's in the Bible is true or false or happened, didn't happen, if we look at it and we study it, right, and we diligently study it, there is a particular point of view. There's a point of view that we can clearly see if we take the time and have that mind, that, that willing and attentive and a repentive mind that says that they may recover themselves out of the sneer, right, out of the trap. This is why we're pointing to some things about the Bible, the KJV, King James Version of the Bible. Um, it, it can make Elohe, El, Elohe Yisrael, the true good, the true God of Israel, lie. It can make God a liar. Right? It can. Not that it does, but it's able to. Right? This is why you have to be wise, the word says, to salvation and Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, our Rabbi Robeinu. You know, he says that wisdom is justified by all of her children. And this is why Proverbs 1 and 8 says, My son, I um, hear the instruction of thy father, forsake not, don't leave, forsake not the law, the Torah of thy mother. 
And then the Moshiach Robeno in the Brit Chadash says that wisdom is justified by all of her children. This is, this is putting into context the true Hebraic and the Hebraicism of the sense of being born again. That idea of being born again, right? being regenerated, right? coming out of the degeneracy. Right? And it has to do with our spirit, our soul, our heart, our mind, and, and how we think. You know, how we think and what we admit, right, as being the truth. So right here, 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 you know, just touching on this briefly, brothers and sisters, you know, and we move forward, right, move forward. The podcast going to begin soon. Check out the podcast. Also check out the replays. Replays are available. Also check us out at LOJS.org. Check the descriptions, right? Those who have given donation are able to donate the Likul or the Mo, right? We give thanks and praise and seek to put it forward in this work, right? And in our ministry and labor and to support the works going on to free and to recover ourselves, to recover ourselves out of the sneer of the liars and the lies and the spirit, the counterfeit spirit. Amen, amen, so we can truly give that nadaba, right, as Dawid says, right, that free will offering of the mouth, word, sound, and power, because it says that he will destroy, you know, the evildoers with the word, the spirit of the word, the spirit of his mouth, the spirit of truth. Amen, amen.